Hi everybody, welcome back to Rachel and Bella Craft. Rachel here. I hope you're all well. I um, just want to say a huge hello and welcome to all our new viewers and subscribers. Um, I know we've had quite a few um, additional people um, to the channel over the last couple of weeks, so just a big welcome and hello to you. I do apologise if you're only banging. It is actually snowing here quite a lot. <laughs> I don't have had this much snow here in Wales in quite a few years, but my son is outside and he's throwing snowballs at the house. So if you hear a loud bang, don't be alarmed. Everything's okay. Okay, so moving on. What are we doing today? Well, we are continuing our project with our Franken papers. Um, but we're going to do a little project um, today with some decoupage with some napkins. Um, now, somebody kindly reminded me in the comments, I do read your comments, thank you, um, about my lovely napkins. And I was like, oh yeah. So I want to make something to go on the cover of my Franken paper um, journal cover which I have now cut down and I've gone all around the edges and um, stitched to make it nice and firm and solid. And I've tucked the one bit in the back and I'm going to make that into a little tuck spot thing. Um, but I want to put something on the front, obviously, to reflect Peter Rabbit, because I, I never in a million years thought I'd be making a kind of grungy themed Peter Rabbit, uh, Beatrix Potter, sorry, um, journal. But that's just how it's gone. And I actually really, really like it. So... I want to find something, some way of putting him onto the front. And I was kindly reminded about my beautiful napkin. So I thought, right, well, why not? Let's give that a go. So what I didn't want to do was to decoupage straight onto this because if it didn't work out, I have then ruined my nice cover. So I thought I will do it onto something else and then put it on. So what I thought we'd do today is to try some different um, papers, surfaces, um, media, to add napkin to and we'll see how they turn out so i have got here in front of me some music paper i have got a piece of braille paper which is actually i would say it's about 120 gsm so it's a bit like card stock really so if you were looking to kind of replicate that i have also got some very very thin um piano paper that i have had for a long long time somebody sent it to me about two years ago um yeah, Chrissy sent me this um, in a happy mail last last year, I think, or the year maybe in the last year. Um, but as I was looking through my vellum, I spotted this. So I thought, well, let's just give it a go and we'll see how it turns out because I needed to find some way to use that. Um, and then, of course, I've also got um, a sheet of vellum here. Um, if you are going to give this a go at home you could, and you don't have vellum, you could try tracing paper. Um, but basically just grab a couple of different types of papers that you have there. Um, you know, you could be, you could try it on card, you could try it on newspaper, you could try it on Amazon packaging, you could try it on tissue paper. That might be an interesting combination. Um, you could try it on a paper bag. Um, oh, that'd be lush because it'd be really crinkly, wouldn't it? Um, what else could you try it on? There's, there's lots of things. So have a little look and see what you've got in your stash um, and try and adapt this and obviously to kind of work for you. And if you don't have any of those things, just do it a normal decoupage as you normally would, okay? Um, but obviously I'm kind of testing this out for you guys so that we can kind of see how these media work together. So um, I've put, oh no, I won't come to that. I'll show you that a bit later. I was gonna show you what I've done with the pages, but I won't, I'll show you that after. Don't get distracted, Rach. Right, I have got in front of me here two, um, sorry, I'm gonna cough. <coughs> I have to turn the camera off just now because I was choking on an air bubble. <coughs> how ridiculous is that? I'd literally just taken a breath and was like, oh, I can't breathe. <laughs> That's not good in the middle of a film. A film, video even. Um, I have got these Peter Rabbit um, beautiful napkins, serviettes, which I bought from Morrison's, uh, which is a supermarket here in the UK. I'm not sure how worldwide they are. Possibly not very, but um, I, they're obviously out for least a time, aren't they? So they are two-ply. Um, and if you have not used napkins to decoupage before, um, I will explain in a moment what that means. Um, I'm just going to cut the area that I'm going to be using because um, I can keep those sections there then for another product. These are really cute, aren't they? But they would be lovely <clears throat> put on as strips, maybe. Perhaps, um, ah, you know what I'm going to use those for. Right, we'll come back to those. We'll come back to them later. Right, let's do these first. And you're all thinking, she won't come back to that later. She's going to completely forget that now. If I forget, just remind me. <laughs> I'll do it in another, in another episode. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious me. It's the 
snow has gone to our heads today. I'm just so relieved that my heating's working this morning. Right, okay. So by two ply, I mean this. So obviously to decoupage, you need to take the back backing off of the um, actual napkin, okay? Because um, <clears throat> otherwise when you glue it down, it'll start to separate. It'll only, you know, the first, uh, this layer will be absorbed and then this will peel off. So you need to take all other layers off. Now, some napkins have three ply, some have two ply. Um, I don't know, can you get four ply? I don't think I've ever seen one with four on, but um, usually the more expensive they are, the less ply they put on there sometimes you find as well. But um, yeah, no, so just peel those off. A little tip is if you're trying to separate the two, Get a little bit of washi tape or sticky tape and stick it because you don't want it to be really sticky or it'll tear. And then literally just tab it on and it will eventually just pull uh, the one away. And then if you just gently separate them, you can keep that bit then for something else. There's always another project you can use those for. Okay, um, so these are the Peter Rabbit ones. And then I have got um, some beautiful... I bought this when I went to, where did I go? Port Merion. Do you remember I went to Port Merion last year? Um, last summer that was. We went up to North Wales for a weekend and um, yes, I was very excited to finally get the opportunity to go and visit Port Merion. I think I put a photograph actually on my YouTube. Um, but they had a lovely shop there with all, all things Port Merion and my other half spotted these and he was like, oh, look, love, don't you always look for nice napkins? You know, they'd be very nice. And I was like, oh, actually, they would be very nice. So I'm going to utilise one of these as well today because I think they would go quite nicely in there too because I'm loving the blue. Let's see how many ply the Port Merion one is. There you go. So see how I just dab that on and it's just gently separated. I think there's another one on there. I could be wrong, but we'll have a look now. There, pull that, pop it over there. Let's just double check now. Is there another layer there now? Or is that just very thick? I can't see. The snow outside is so bright. Um, no, I think there is. Yeah, there is. There it is. Is that coming away there? Ah, come on. Yes. There we go. Come on. There we are. Do you see the difference now? How it's more vibrant without, and it's obviously much more transparent. Because that's what we're, we're aiming for, isn't it? Is the, <coughs> excuse me, it's the transparency of um, the napkin. Hence why I'm testing different under uh, layers. Because obviously I intend that we should be able to see them. Ooh, that's lovely. Right, we'll come back to that one in a moment. So let's try, let's try some music paper first. And then we will perhaps try the vellum next then. Um, so what I've done, I've uh, mixed some Mod Podge because I didn't have any PVA. I don't know why, there just doesn't ever seem to be PVA in my house. Which is ridiculous, my last painter decorator. I know somewhere he's got a huge five litre bottle, but I just can't find it. So I've mixed it with some water. <coughs> Please don't ask me what the um, compound mixture that is. I have no idea. I just put like that much water in and then Mod Podge and then just stirred. So it's a really nice watery mix, um, but it is enough. Um, otherwise, if, if it, I just find it was a bit too thick. Well, it, is, it just doesn't need it. It doesn't need to be that thick. I don't find anyway. Um, obviously, you do as you wish, but um, it certainly makes your stuff go a bit further then, doesn't it? Right, so that on there. Let's get Peter down. So I'm going to just pop him on there. And then I was having a little go earlier on today whilst watching the wonderful... Tina from Shabby Dabby Dooda, and she gave us an amazing tip. I have never seen this done before. She had a piece of acetate, which is what I got here. Um, I was running around thinking, acetate, acetate, where can I find my acetate? Because my box of it is in the attic. And I realised my stamps come on acetate, so I took one of the top layers off some of my stamps. Um, but look, 
by doing this, I can rub now onto the um, <clears throat> napkin. If anybody's just clicked on now mid video, they'll be horrified. Like, what is she doing rubbing her hands on that napkin? It's okay, there's a piece of acetate down there. But it, it allows me to do that without um, tearing the serviette. How cool is that? So you just lift it up carefully. But it, you know, you can kind of smooth everything down with it then. Because otherwise, if you put your fingers on it, chances are you're going to tear it, aren't, aren't they? So, you know, there's always one bit that's got to come back up. In which case, then we'll just very carefully go back over it because perhaps there's just not enough glue on there. There we are. Job done. Doesn't that look swell? Look how vibrant the colours are on there as well. Very pretty. Right, so we'll leave that to dry now. And we'll give the others a try. Oh, stop fussing. Right, that'll do. That'll do. Put that down with that. Okay, right, that's over there drying. Okay, let's try the vellum next. Now, the vellum is going to start to roll as soon as I start putting water or a wet substance on it. So my advice would be <laughs> pin it down. Um, if I got something, I can put this in. Something small is starting to get in my way. Um, probably not. No, I'm going to knock that over now. Don't worry, I'll hold this bit. Right, so let's do the same thing with this now. Bit of vellum. Pop our... PVA -E Mod Podge substance onto it. Really should get a bigger brush. That's all I could find. Somewhere in this room is a new pack of uh, brushes in like half inch, um, an inch, I think, and an inch and a half. And I keep finding them when I don't need them. And then when I do need them, I can't ever put my hands on them. I don't know what they hide in this morning, but I've looked at them about four times in the last month because I was trying to find a brush a couple of weeks ago because I was painting something, some furniture, and I was looking for a little brush, and I was like, ugh, and then came across them, and now I need them today, nowhere to be seen. Murphy's Law again, look. Right, press that down now, very carefully. This is like, you know that thing that, that goes around on the wheels. I was not, I was today years old when I learned this. Well, this is going to be my kind of thing for that. I was today years old when I learned this amazing tip. This should have been in our tips, tricks and hacks. I bet everybody knows how to do this except me, don't they? My bad. I'm always late to the party. <laughs> I just thought it was a really good tip. I had to rewind. You know that moment we just have to rewind a YouTube video? It's like, whoa, stop Tina, what are you doing? What did I miss there? How are you, because I was obviously looking down and I looked up and saw, how is she rubbing her fingers all over that Mod Podge stuff? And then realized she was using acetate. It's like, oh, cool, good idea. Right, so there we go. That's the acetate then. I've kind of over glued a bit, but we won't worry about that. So I'm gonna pop that over there now to dry off. And um, we'll see how that looks then later on. Right, I'm, there. I'm running out of space now, I need my tiny little radiator. Okay, so what have we got left? We've got this left and we've got the braille paper card, it is back here, isn't it? So I'm thinking, I obviously don't want to, well, actually, no, I think I'm going to do the whole panel. But what I don't want to do is waste any of this beautiful napkin. So how can I do that without, right, I'll have to just come in a little bit maybe. Let me just cut that short. I don't I don't want to risk getting any of this wet and then I'm going to just, you know, lop it. So it's easier to cut off the excess while it's dry. And then I can use those again then. All scraps are usable. Gosh, imagine putting this in your franken paper. Oh my gosh, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Imagine that lovely vibrant strip in the middle of your franken paper. Oh, yes, good idea. Keep that for that later. 
later. And then, we'll do something else on that one in a minute. Let's get this one done first. Because I know what I'm going to do with this. Okay, so, let's see how it goes on to the um, Braille card. I thought it would be interesting to try this because obviously this paper has got texture to it. And it's... Um, You know, with it being raised, need to see if it'll go on to the surface without the damage or anything. That's where I think the acetate will come in handy with this. Um, because, obviously, if I was rubbing the brush even over the top of it on here, that would, might be a little bit too um, delicate. So, as I've cut this so exactly, now I need to make sure I put it on exactly, don't I? Right, I think that'll be okay there. See, it's snowing today, eh? All the schools are shut. Well, they are a bow away anyway. We're, we're up in the mountain bit on the hills. Um, oh, I've never been so relieved as I was this morning when my youngest was stood up to the door. Mum, you're awake. And I was like, oh, gosh, is it that time already? I feel like I've had like three hours sleep. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm up, I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. You know, that kind of thing as you jump up. Yeah, I was up, I was up. What's the time? Oh, he said, it's okay, don't worry about it. Look outside. And I thought, oh, I know what that's code for. I haven't heard that for a while. So over I dutifully trot to the window. I was like, oh, it's not just a little bit snowing, it's really snowing. <laughs> so yeah, rather exciting. But we're meant to be driving up to Crafts tomorrow, which is not a short drive for us. Up to Birmingham, Birmingham. And uh, sorry, I'm gonna do that. That's just a habit that is. I can't say that without doing that. Um, oh, look at that! Isn't that stunning? Oh, I hope it's still that pretty when it's dry. Oh, that's lush. I love it. I love it. I can't wait to play with that. I'm so excited. It's like making your own paper, isn't it? Right, let's try something now on this one. Should I tell you what, we'll use those um, floral ones, should we? On there, because I don't want them going to waste. Um, what have I done with oh, this? So yeah, um, we meant to be driving up there early in the morning, um, but they forecast this until tomorrow evening, uh, and it, it literally hasn't stopped snowing since about three o'clock this morning. Not that I was awake at three. I was up till about half one, um, and I did have a cursory glance at the, the window as I went to bed and thought, well, oh, there's no sign of any snow out there at the minute. Um, <clears throat> But, uh, no, it must have had, well, I had a text then from my, my number two. He's in uni and he texted me at half past three <clears throat> to tell me that he wasn't feeling very well. And by the way, it's snowing. <laughs> I was like, oh, right, okay. I obviously didn't read that at half past three. I saw it at nine o'clock when my mother texted me because um, my phone hadn't made a noise. Well, at least I, yeah, my phone's on silence at night. I don't uh, leave it on because I have too many notifications through the night. Um, so my family all know if they need us in an emergency, <laughs> ring Dan's phone, because mine's off. Just the sound is off, you know. Um, otherwise it would be ping, ping, ping all night on there. Right, so I want to make sure i got all the flowery bits on there. Don't want to waste any of this, do we? I might, I might just trim that bit there, because in doing that... I'll then be able to um, get the whole thing on then. Oh my goodness, have you watched Angela Kerr's um, video from last night? Oh, amazing. She did um, a tour of her craft room. Oh my goodness, it is absolutely beautiful. She's done such a marvellous job redoing her room. Well, she said she'd moved rooms, didn't she? Because she was in um, one of the other rooms and it had gotten a little small for her. So she moved into another room, which is probably is equally as small because the bedrooms in our country are not very generous at all. Um, 
but she, uh, yeah, no, she, she gave us a full on tour. Oh, my word, it was amazing. And I was fascinated because her room is slightly larger than mine, but similar dimensions. Um, and it was really interesting actually to see how she'd used her space. So she's kind of giving me some food for thought there. Um, but oh, yeah, go and check it out. It's lovely. It, her room is immaculate. So, so tidy. And it's exactly as I expected it to be. Really, really pretty um, and very, very organised and tidy. Uh, nothing like my room at all. <laughs> um, but, oh, yeah, it was it was lovely. It was so nice to uh, for her to let us in to her little corner and to share that with us. Because um, you, you, you guys, I don't know whether you actually think about the, the goes on behind the thought process of doing a craft room share you know a uh, tour whatever they're called um it, it's huge for 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 the youtubers doing that because um you know we, we do our stuff we do our our crafty stuff and you you see this little area here um you have no idea what's going on outside of this space you know in anyone's room really um and it is quite nerve-wracking and especially if you're not a particularly organized person uh, i.e moi um I, I, because I, that's why I haven't done one yet. I feel quite vulnerable about it. So, ugh, huge, huge kudos to Angela for doing that. I know that would have taken a lot of courage for her to, um, to share that with everybody. Um, you know, and I hope that she's had, um, some really lovely feedback from that. But, uh, but yeah, it's, 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 that's quite a vulnerable thing for, for YouTubers to do. So, when you do watch, um, those videos, you know, take note, make, be, be kind and, leave them a nice comment and you know appreciate the fact that they are sharing their tips and ideas because we all wonder how to store stuff don't we in our craft rooms we all wonder how best to do things i'm always fascinated when i got into mum's because she's got really good systems up there you know um and it's not about going out and spending loads of money buying stuff it's about being able to utilize things and oh lucky so it's no balls at my way i clock him um and being able to think outside of the box um and because not everybody's good at doing that you know not everybody's creative in that way. So you appreciate then them sharing their creativity with us. But, um, but yeah, it is. It's, it's really putting yourself out there doing that. So um, I don't know whether you're aware of that or not. But just for you to be aware of that, it might make you think differently when you uh, watch one in the future. But, um, yeah, you've got to be super, super confident about the space that you're in, I think, to be able to do that. Um I I can't believe that I've been in this room now for I don't know how long I've been in there four months it doesn't feel that long and um I just still haven't managed to get the chance to get it organised just so much going on of course it was work before and um well I gotta be honest there isn't really anywhere to put anything it's 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 done at the minute I'm just waiting on some shelves and stuff but um there's nothing to show you at the minute because I've got a cup you know I've got my calyx cupboards with a couple of pull-out things and that's about it every evening my other half walks in when he comes in from his gym outside and he's like let's go all this stuff on the floor and I'm like shut up <laughs> where else is it gonna go that's it my cupboards are full they're tidy but they're full so because I don't have many but uh I'll get there that's the least of my concerns at the minute I'm really not worried about it. I'm just enjoying being in my space and my desk is tidy so that's a huge bonus and I can get to my sewing machine the only thing I've got left to do now is organise a space so I can get my cricket up and set it up. There we go. Right, okay, that's on there. First thing I'm going to let you know that I've observed, putting it on this very thin paper, is that it's um it's very thin. <laughs> that's very descriptive, isn't it? Uh, no, but it, it feels very fragile. I'm going to just pop that on there in a minute for ease of manoeuvrability. But yeah, um, but I'll still be able to see some of the details I think underneath so but it is like using hmm, tracing paper I suppose right I'm going to pop this over by the radiator wipe my desk down and I'll be back in a moment okay so everything's had a chance to dry off now um I just thought I would show you the finished articles so this is the one that uh, I did on to some braille paper um and that's actually just dried really really well Colours are still nice and vibrant and you can still feel and see the braille texture underneath. So obviously if I'd used, um, so I do have some of this that I've coffee dyed in the past, um, that, you know, that would come through too. But I like it on the white actually. It's, it's really um, bright and vibrant. So yeah, and it's, it's stuck down well. So that's a go. Uh, this is the one that I did on the vellum. 
I'm not quite sure what to make of this. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, it goes on well, but I feel you're kind of sacrificing the um, the texture of the vellum, basically for the sake of being able to put the pattern on there. I don't know. I just think that I think there probably are easier ways to put something onto vellum maybe transfer stickers or something if you really want to print directly onto it it would probably be just easier wouldn't it i just think that because that's gone it's shrunk now isn't it and i i don't know i just feel it's kind of compromised it um i don't know can you put a cool iron over vellum never really tried gotta be honest someone here probably has uh would you be able to flatten that better i don't know but um you know it's taken well it's, it's the image is really really clear but i'm just unsure because of all that crinkling that's going on around there so i don't know jury's out on that one i'm not quite sure um oh this is lovely i love this on the music paper the music paper comes through really nice um yes can definitely see me using that i like that very very much um oh and this was the um the other pattern paper that i put on to the braille one sorry the other braille one i did beforehand but that was the pattern paper that I put onto the braille. And again, that's going to be nice. And you can still see the um, edges on this. So it's kind of kept that intact as well. So look forward to having a look at that after. And then last but not least, this is the one that I did on the uh, piano paper, which is basically like, um, kind of like tissue paper, actually. Gosh, we used to have paper like this in our toilets when we were in school as kids. It's bizarre. Um, but that's, that's gone on well. It's quite crinkly, but again, that all adds to the texture of it but um yeah i think that's gonna be a bit of fun working with those later so um yeah that's gone on there well it, you know there's a little bit of shrinkage but nothing that will kind of stop you doing what you need to do with it you know that's still a perfectly usable um sheet of paper so there's your results that's the different types of surfaces we've tried with today i'm going to just grab my um music paper now and i'm going to show you how i'm hoping to put my cover together so one moment okay so this is my journal so far um like i say i've i've i cut down what i didn't need um and i made sure that it was you know the right size for the signature that i've put together um i'm not sure if i'm going to keep that little flap yet it all depends if i line the inside but i'll be honest i, I quite like the feel of this rustic just as it is feel it's, it's perfectly sturdy um you know i don't intend on throwing it around or anything the fit is great um and i'm just quite tempted to maybe leave it like that and perhaps just put a nice big pocket in the front of it i just really like how rustic it is and i like opening it and this you know book page being here um so i'll just quickly show you my pages i've put together i've put some plain coffee dive ones in there <laughs> my little bunnies um so that i can put in the pockets and things that i've made um but i just think these pages look absolutely brilliant little cluster i made there that's that stamp that we did the pocket we stitched in i've got a coffee dye page there ready to put some more uh, ephemera in but i think these look brilliant that pocket there and great idea there obviously you know um the suggestion that we had about putting in the um stitching in the pockets you know as part of the um franken paper i have to say i'm a little tickled by how many of you have written on uh in the groups and in the comments uh your frankenstein paper i wasn't sure whether that was a freudian slip or what but it's tickled me very much um and then this was a oops too many that was a page i did then yesterday um I just made a little tuck under there and then this here I took that out of that one page of the kit and I've taken a piece of coffee dye paper, doubled it up, made a little well, a large envelope baggy thing out of it and then I put some scraps of fabric and lace underneath I just kind of built it up under there so and then obviously I didn't stitch this shirt until I'd stitched out so on the inside of that that's where all my stitching is look um and i kept the one half of the page open <clears throat> to secure it all down and then i just stitched then the last bit together to finish then bit of stamping bob's your uncle so i'm very pleased with that um but yeah so like i said i've got ephemera there now that we've been obviously working on i'm going to pop all that in there later on pleased with that um 
and across my belly band. So a few extra bits and pieces yet to do. But I think from the cover perspective, I actually quite like how rustic that feels. Um, yeah, I really do. So I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to feel pressured to, to line the inside. Because obviously I've said, oh, you know, I would line that. But I, I don't know. I, I think it all depends on what you do with it. If you were, you know, selling it or sending it on somewhere, then yes, maybe. Because you'd want a, a bit of something solid but for me just keeping that as a bit of a it feels like a really junky journal and having this cover on it kind of adds to that I think so what I thought I would do this is what I've done with that music page I've just gone around with my uh, tear ruler the one I was using yesterday I've used the larger side um and I've just torn um it into this lovely little circle shape now I've um, Denard, I spent ages this afternoon going through drawers, looking for stuff, because I was trying to find a round shaped doily that would fit on here, an old one, you know, um, but I didn't have one this shape. I only got a few there now. Um, I thought I had more. I'm not sure what I've done with them all. Um, but I wanted it just a little bit wider, so the ones I had were either too big or too tiny. So instead, I thought I would try something else. It may work, it may not work, but I'm going to have to just bite the bullet. So what I thought I might try and do instead was taking some old scraps of lace um, and giving them a bit of a franken style of their own underneath this and then this will sit on top of it. Does that make sense? So let's give this a quick go a minute and just see um, how it looks. I'm thinking if I put that one there, this one I love because it's really texturized it's like crochet it's really really lovely um but they i've got them all there in my well i say all of them i, I don't have many of them left now but i'm trying to use my collection up because i find if they're just sitting on stuff what's the point in that if i use things i'll come across some more i'm sure in the future so but at least i've had a bit of fun using them up then but trying to stick to my thing of not hoarding this year um, and then perhaps was it that one or well, that one I think on the front then and I'll stick it down but I just thought that was something maybe a little bit different obviously bear in mind they'll be trimmed and then I'll place that then on the top of there but I don't know I just thought it was a bit different I didn't know how else to do it. I like the Franken look underneath, but I just wanted it to feel like it had a bit of a, a back in, and I didn't really want to just put a square of material or something around him. Um, but I think that looks quite nice. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to go for it. So I'm going to put turn the camera off a minute so I can concentrate, and then I will show you when I finished. Won't be long. Okay, so I've added the lace now to um, the cover quite happy with how that's gone on there i've just and i've literally just ooh hooed it on because <coughs> i didn't want loads and loads of glue everywhere um so i'm just going to stick this little guy on here now i'm going to use fabri tac to do that so that it will cling properly to the lace um and i just hope now that, that will come out through there oh here we go here we go it's been a while since i've used this um so i've made two little clusters to go on the outer edges um, just because I wanted to kind of remember that it's not a Peter Rabbit journal it's a Beatrix Potter journal <laughs> um, and as much as he's front and centre and star of the show uh, it is all about her you know so I wanted to make sure she was included on my cover um, enough. Right, I just need to check now for <coughs> space. Excuse me, sorry, I need a cough in your ear like that. Right, I'm going to put him there. That is, that is straight now, isn't it? It's ever so difficult to see from this angle. I just, yeah, right, that's fine. And then I'm going to pop her there like that. So again, let's try and get 
some of this glue out. My goodness. Well, a couple of hours ago I started doing this video between, you know, waiting for bits to dry and taking photographs of my son playing in the snow and it is still coming down that day. I reckon we've got to have had a good six to seven inches fall in the garden. It's crazy. And I thought I would pop that one then up there up like that. What do you think? Oh. So there we are guys. We have now made a journal cover together. You know what's going to be coming next. So I hope you're getting your franking pages done. And it doesn't matter if you've got most of one sheet and then just add some bits on the end. You know, it doesn't the whole thing doesn't have to all be made of um, scraps. I mean, like that piece that I've got here has um, literally, that's a brown paper bag, coffee paper and one book page. So, I mean, you know, it doesn't matter how much it's involved. And it doesn't all have to be made up from scratch from tiny little strips. Oh, I really like that. Oh. It's so cute. I'm pleased with how the lace went underneath. My back then is still retaining its frankiness. And then the inside is really franky too. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yes, that's very much a, a me twee cover, that is. <coughs> I might have changed my mind by tomorrow. I may have put, but I don't think so. I like this too much. I like what's in there. I love it. I love it. I love it. This is fabulous. Fabulous project. I hope you're enjoying yourselves as much as I am. Um, so there we are. That's my cover done. And then tomorrow we're going to stitch in the stitches. Stitch in stitches. Stitch in the signature even. And uh, I'm going to finish putting my bits and pieces in there now this afternoon. And then, um, and then we'll be away. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed the video today, guys. I hope you will have a go at decoupage in your um, napkins. Because I know most of you, if not all of you, have got a napkin lurking somewhere in your stash. Um, yeah, so Franken papers. We'll get this finished tomorrow then. And then hopefully all of you will have something to show for it in the shape of a journal. And I'm not being funny, guys. This has been so easy to do. So easy. Um you know, even down to the cover. I think sometimes we make the thought of making a journal like a really big task for ourselves. And it's really not, it's, you know, we're making junk journals. We're not, you know, we're not bookbinders. We're not, um, we're not selling them in Deloitte Smith. We're literally making beautiful little works of art from the things that we want to make. So um, don't be daunted by it. Have a go. And don't forget to put your photos on the Facebook group. Have a great day, everybody. And if you are in the UK and in Wales, especially keep safe and keep warm. See you soon. Bye.